Are you wondering how to get ahead financially? Well, if so, check out today's video because today I'm going to show you how rich people spend their money. So what's going on guys? It's Josiah, your success consultant. And in today's video, I'm going to show you all of the ways and how rich people spend their money traditionally versus how poor people have been programmed to spend their money, okay? So, with no further ado, make sure you click below to subscribe, be your brother's keeper, and share this video with a friend, and let's empower our community. So, first thing that you gotta know is this. Now, I don't know if you've ever read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Rob Kiyosaki. If you haven't checked it out, I would highly suggest it. Rich people and poor people spend their money in two totally different ways. Now, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to the subject of what makes the rich rich and what makes the poor poor. And without going into too many political discussions or morality type discussions, I want to share with you this. When it comes to our money and when it comes to our time, all of us get it to a certain extent. Now you may not have as much money as someone else, but it's important that you're wise with every dollar that comes to you. So today I wanna share with you some of the top things that self-made millionaires have done to attain their wealth with little to no resources and how by you following those exact same principles, it can actually change your life. So let's go ahead and hop right into it, okay? So I'm gonna make this real easy. We're gonna break this down into two columns. We're gonna do column one, rich, column two, poor, okay? Now, don't take offense to the titles of rich or poor. I'm just making it very simple and very plain so that way you understand exactly what it is that I'm saying. You know, one of the first things that you need to understand from this video is that rich and poor is not a matter of what's actually in your bank account. Rich and poor is a matter of mindset. Everything begins in the mind first. So, even if you do not have rich people money, because all of us started from the bottom, you can still think like a wealthy person and you can still do things to live a very rich life. You know, there's a lot of people that's in the world today that actually have a little bit of money in their bank account, but they're not actually happy with life. And I don't know if I would necessarily call that a rich life. So in today's video, what I want to do is share with you some of the top principles that wealthy people that have enjoyed their life and achieved a certain level of success that they're proud of attribute as some of the top reasons as to how they got to that success. And I'm going to share with you some of the things that I have done as I've grown my way out of being homeless born and raised in South Central Los Angeles, to becoming a real estate investor, entrepreneur, and best-selling author, okay? I wouldn't regard myself as any rich man, but I know that I've been very blessed all at the same time. So let's go ahead and hop into it, okay? So the first thing that the rich do, especially when it comes to how they spend their money, is at a high level, the rich spend their money on assets, Okay, assets is anything that's making you money. Poor people, how have they been programmed? They've been programmed to spend their money on liabilities. Okay, this is very important. If you don't take anything else away from this video, understand that every single one of us gets a dollar, okay? If you make excuses about the system, the economy, the government, your race, you're going to be limiting yourself from how far you can grow in today's video, okay? Now, we all know that there are certain factors that's working against us as a people, but I want you to block that out for today's video 
And I want you to just soak up the knowledge objectively. Because if you're the type of person that attributes every failure in life to something that's outside of yourself or what you could do to change it, how are you ever going to succeed? Right. So I'm not telling you to act like, you know, there's no problems in the world. Obviously, there is. Obviously, that exists. But some of us are learning how to be able to succeed in spite of it. OK, and I want you to be one of those people. So when it comes to the rich, they spend their money on assets, things that's actually making them money. OK, so I'm going to give you a prime example. Even when we talk about the subject of how the rich spend their money, see, I put that in my YouTube title because I knew that you were searching for it. But if you speak to any rich person, rich people don't really spend money. Rich people invest money. Now, that might sound a little tried and cliche or, oh, Uzziah, don't get into semantics. Hit us with the real stuff. But it's very small things that leads to large successes. And one of those small things is just the perspective that you have and the language that you use to describe the things that you do, okay? When it comes to how the rich invest their money, the rich invest their money in assets while poor people spend their money on liabilities. Assets are things that are making you money. OK, now I'm going to give you a prime example because you might be asking, Uzziah, well, what are those assets? Well, I think one of the best ways for us to go about actually tackling this is to talk about a lot of things that people will spend money on that are not actual assets, but are rather liabilities. We'll use inversion. OK, so, you know, when you think about this, the average person has been programmed to believe that they've got to buy a brand new car as soon as they want to be able to get a vehicle, right? Now you've got all these digital resources, you've got Craigslist, right? You've got CarMax, you've got this whole online world where you're able to communicate with people and make deals and barters and negotiates and trades with them but the prevalent thing that we've still been taught in society is if you're going to get a car, buy a new one. So that's one of the very first liabilities, right? Because again, by definition, a liability is anything that is losing you money rather than making you money. Now, again, let's take a step back, okay? Try to put your mind into that of a wealthier person. You might be saying, well, Josiah, it is actually making me money because I'm, you know, going to work every single day and that's how the money is getting made. You know, I've got this job and I've got to have this car. Or, you know, maybe I'm thinking about doing Uber, so that's how I'm going to be able to turn this thing from a liability into an asset. Well, I'm giving you the traditional lowdown on how rich people invest their money. Typically, when it comes to something like a new car, right? The car in it of itself as a vehicle is not giving you a return on your investment, okay? So let's say that you buy a new car, right? And let's pretend just for all intents and purposes that that vehicle is $30,000, okay? Now, is it possible that in this, you know, sharing economy, you can make more than $30,000 by Ubering around and driving around in a car. Sure, you could do that, right? But think about how many expenses are going to have to go into making this profitable because not only are you going to be getting this new car, which will come with an average car payment of anywhere between four to $500, you're also going to have to be thinking about getting insurance for that vehicle. You're going to have to be thinking about how much gas you're going to spend as you're transporting people back and forth, right? So if you're just buying a car for the sake of Ubering around, I would wager to say that there's probably better investments that are at your disposal. But just going without the Uber example, if you just buy a new car just because, like you're not even Ubering, but you buy a new car, 
right now you're at a liability. You've taken a dollar and instead of transferring it into something that's going to make you money over time in and of itself, you've decided to spend money on something that's going to lose you money. And that's the reason why whenever I do get a vehicle, I always buy one that's used. You know, it's really most wealthy people will probably tell you the exact same thing that I'm telling you in that they don't really think about buying a brand new car unless they have a net worth that's a million dollars or more. Because the honest truth is, if your net worth is not a million dollars or more, you really can't afford it. You might think that you can afford it because everybody else in your family that might be struggling with finances is getting a new car. You might think that you can because, you know, you look at people on Facebook and all your friends that you went to college with, all of them are getting a new car, but this expense alone is going to be one of the top things that can keep you at a job that you don't want to be at for many years down the line because you're going to have to make a certain level of income just to be able to work on paying this off. Even just to be able to afford the monthly bill. You got the car note, you got the insurance, you got the gas, you got everything that comes with it, all the bells and whistles. And so it's going to take money for you to just pay this down. And so again, that's the reason why anytime that I purchase a vehicle, if I cannot pay the vehicle outright in cash, I don't get the vehicle. Because why would I take, if I could help it, my disposable income and throw it all at a liability? Right. If I get an extra dollar, I'm going to want to put it on an asset, something that is making me money. Right. So when it comes to something like an asset, that would be something along the lines of, let's say, a business. Right. Why are most wealthy people business owners? That's a question that you have to ask yourself. If you read a book called The Millionaire Next Door, it'll tell you that two thirds of all the millionaires in America are business owners. And the reason why that is, is because business is an asset producing vehicle. Meaning when you work at building your business, your business is going to come and put money back into your pocket at an exponential rate. You see, if you were to work at a nine to five job, that will help you make a living because it's going to give you a fixed amount of income based upon your salary or based upon, you know, your hourly wage. But when you look at the people that have actually built wealth, right? If you were to look at the Forbes richest people in America, I guarantee you that a large portion of those people are business owners. So that's one of the games that you might want to be in, right? Now, here's another one that's really important. Most people think that buying a house is an asset. And that's the reason why a lot of people that end up buying homes struggle financially because they've never been educated about what a true asset represents. Again, here's the definition of an asset. It is something that is making you money, okay? It's making you money. So the only time that a home would be an asset is if it became an income producing vehicle in the form of a real estate investment. So I'm gonna give you a prime example. You know, for most people, when they become first time homeowners, they decide to just go ahead and buy a house. They have no intentions of being able to rent it out. The American dream has already programmed them to believe that such a huge accomplishment in life is to just have the nice house with the white picket fence and renting just somehow isn't as good as owning, right? And what they end up doing is they'll end up taking out a mortgage for something when the average mortgage in America is probably close to $200,000, they'll end up taking out a mortgage for a home. And even though 
no one is actually renting out that home and paying them money. They're living it in they're living in it themselves and they're spending money hand over fist because you've got to pay your monthly mortgage. You've got homeowners insurance. And then guess what? Things happen in your home all the time where you always need to get something new. You got to get repairs. You got to do renovations. You got closing cloths. You got appliances. Nobody's coming to fix your home when things begin to break down. So that's the reason why you need to recognize that when you spend your money on liabilities. Now, again, a lot of times what people do is they never look at this in their life objectively. So instead, they will tend to blame the system. Oh, well, you know, the rich are rich just because they're rich. They were born into wealth, right? But whenever you got a dollar, no matter what background that you came from, what did you decide to do with it? So based upon where we're at right now on this chart, which one sounds more like your behavior? When you get paid, were you likely to save up money or take the little bit of money that you already have and put it towards one of these? Or did you decide to take the money and put it towards this? Now, this isn't the only asset. Obviously, we could write out another one. You know, you could look at something like, you know, let's just say a 401k or an IRA, right? 401k or an IRA. For those of you guys that are wondering what an IRA is, it's an investment retirement account. One is a vehicle that allows you to be able to invest in a method that is tax deferred. One allows you to be able to invest in a method that's tax free. Now, what? why is that important? Well, the reason why you need to be able to focus on having investments that give you good tax benefits is because of the fact that most of your income, half of your income that you're gonna spend over the course of your lifetime is gonna to go towards taxes. Have you ever come home from a hard day's work and it might be the first of the month, might be the 15th of the month, and as soon as you open up that pay stub, you see you know, the gross pay that you've gotten paid, but then you see minus Medicare minus social security, minus this insurance, minus this, minus that, minus that. All of these finances have been taken out of your bank account or out of your paycheck before it even hits your bank account to go towards taxes and other expenses. So one of the things that all rich people know how to do is to be able to put their money towards things that aren't as highly taxed. You see, if you invest in a business, there are different tax implications when you invest in a business versus if your only means of income is at working a job. Employees are the most highly taxed out of any other workers in America. Okay. I want to say that again, and I really wanted to be able to resonate in your mind. Employees are the most highly taxed workers in America. And again, that's the reason why two thirds of all millionaires and beyond in America today are business owners. So again, the list kind of goes on forever. I'm just giving real blanket examples. Now let's talk about something again that's really important on the rich side of things, how they spend their money. One of the things that rich people do that is very different from how the poor has been taught is how they invest their money in education. Okay. That's very important. I hope you caught it. How they invest their money in education. So I'm going to give you an example. When I'm talking about education here, I'm not just talking about college because even for a lot of us, that went to college, yeah, you might've went to college, but you also might've walked away with a ton of debt. And there's so many kids that are graduating from college 
that racked up four or five years worth of student loan debt and then they're graduating from college to then go and work for a position that didn't even require a degree in the first place. When it comes to how the rich value education, it's not just through a collegiate means only. That's the reason why when you look at people like uh, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Henry Ford, these were not college graduates, but they were very well educated in the fields in which they aspired to create their ventures. See, it's not that they gave up on education completely, but when it comes to the habits of the rich, they're a lot more into the self education piece. Now, what does that mean when it comes to self education? Okay. This might mean books. This might mean, uh, seminars. This may mean mentors. They are lifelong learners at the areas to which they aspire to become successful. The difference between how the rich invest in their education versus how the poor invest in their education is, one of the things the rich will do is they'll invest in their education for a lifetime. Okay, lifetime learning, right? All, I keep saying this, all successful people that have achieved world-class results, they're lifetime, lifetime learners. No matter what the industry, no matter what it is that they're doing, they've committed themselves to becoming a lifetime learning machine. So you look at a Kobe Bryant. He might have been playing basketball, but didn't he study his craft year in and year out? Wasn't he always on a conquest to get better? Didn't he seek out learning from some of the top mentors that were in the game, right? But when it comes to a lot of us that graduated from college, a lot of us, what we will tend to do is we'll tend to rely upon the degree so heavily that if we're not going for a postgraduate education or, you know, some formal institution of learning, we rarely will take the time to self-educate ever again, right? Now, again, what I'm saying is these are the habits of people that will, are shifting further to the poor side versus people that have been here on this side at one point in time, but now they're trying to make their habits more along the lines of the rich. So you might have grown up graduating from college and getting a new car. You might have grown up deciding, okay, now I want to go ahead and hurry up and buy a new home, right? It's always possible for you to be able to change these things in your life and in your career. But some people, they go through this lifestyle and they never change. So those are the people that I'm talking about when I'm making reference to the rich versus the poor. Someone that adopts this mentality, they may or may not have even gone to college. And if they did, they're relying on that degree for a lifetime to try to hold them over in all the money that they're going to make, right? Again, this is going to be a bad strategy because life is always changing. The information is always advancing. And so if you're only relying on four years of a college education to last you for the next 30 to 40 years of your professional life, then your compensation and the trajectory of how far that you can go is going to be hindered, right? So you always want to be thinking about, okay, how do I get more asset involved? You know, I've probably spent as much money self-educating myself as I did going to college. And when I went to college, the cost of my college education was over $100,000, right? But you ask most people, okay, well, how much money are you spending on your own personal time on buying books? Most people have not really delved into reading on a consistent basis from the time that they got out of their education system, whether it had been high school, 
whether it had been middle school, whether it had been college, right? Most people have only consistently done reading only when an institution assigned it to them, right? But if you look at a person's liability, they'll have the latest and greatest gadgets and things that will cost the most money. You look at a person's phone, it might be the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8, the iPhone X. Spend hundreds of dollars on a telephone and every time there's a new one, they'll continue to spend and they'll continue to consume rather than invest in things that allow them to produce. See, that's the primary difference. When you're operating on this side, you're playing the consumer's game, okay? So anything that is rooted in consumerism, that's what you're going to go for in this area, right? So even if, right? Prime example, take a look right now at whatever shoes that you're wearing. Maybe as you're watching my video, you're chilling around the house in flip-flops. But look at some of the best shoes that you've got that's in your house right now. For some of you guys, that amount is over $100. But here's the question. Have you ever spent $100 or more on buying a book to self-educate? Not $100 or more on a book that your college professor forced you to get as you were in college. I'm saying for your own recreational benefit, for the purpose of your own self-development, have you spent more money on one book? Have you had the willingness to do so, to spend money more on one book that could have the opportunity to be able to change your life based upon the knowledge that you're lacking rather than making that same cash outlay for something that's gonna be deteriorated within a few years time, right? Again, all of these things go down in value. Look at the new car. The minute that you take it off the lot, it's already 15% less in value. Look at your mortgage. Money is going to be like a money pit when it goes into your house. There's nothing wrong with having a home, but what I'm saying is, if you do this too prematurely, and for every dollar that you get, it's always going to the right instead of going to the left, you're pretty much cementing what your outcome is going to be from a financial perspective, okay? So these are all very important things to think about. You know, even when it comes to your personal development, some of you guys have seen online courses that are available. Skill education training that would be able to help you do things like get a better job if you're looking for a better job, start a business if you're looking to start a business, invest if you're looking to invest, but people have been programmed to have so much skepticism and put off until tomorrow all of the assets that comes in the field of education, but instead they would spend that exact same money on going on a date night. They spend that exact same amount of money going to the movies. They spend that exact same amount of money on fast food. And if you're spending all of your money towards consumerism or entertainment or things, even in areas that you know isn't actually enhancing your life, how will you ever expect to be able to build real wealth, okay? I could really talk about this for such a long time, but the whole point that I'm trying to convey to you is I could tell a lot about where you're going in life based upon how you spend your 24 hours in a day and how you spend your money. It's not so much that you're not making enough money to be able to get to this category. It's a bigger priority on what you did with the money that you had and where it went that will ultimately cement your fate when it comes to your success because again, when it comes to the things that we want in life, we always find a way to get it. When it comes to the fashion that we want, we know how to be able to get it. When it once comes to the cars, we know how to be able to get it. When it comes to the entertainment, 
right? When it comes to all of the things that we find ourselves enticed to go after, it becomes very easy for us to go for those things. But in exchange, what we will do is we will literally talk our way out of getting the things that will take us to a point of wealth building and riches in this category, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a moment and I want you to think about how you could spend more time and more energy focusing on putting your money towards assets, okay? Putting your money towards assets. Now, most people are programmed again to spend all of their money towards liabilities, right? And that's the reason why the average person in America right now is living paycheck to paycheck. We've been programmed to follow after a system that have made us consumers by default while making everyone else outside of ourselves rich. If you want to be able to make yourself wealthier rather than someone else, now is the time for you to start putting more folks on assets. So whether that means that you have a business, whether that means that you've actually started to invest in your real estate in terms of renting it out to someone, making it profitable, whether it means that, you know, you're going to the latest and greatest conferences, you're going to the latest and greatest seminars, you're going to the places that you need to be at to accelerate your learning so that way you could become better skilled and you could come up with better systems to be able to generate better streams of income. As you invest in yourself, you're going to get an ROI. As you invest in things, that's going to take away from your success, okay? There's nothing wrong with being able to treat yourself every now and then to a nice liability. You ask any of my friends, they don't know anybody that vacations more than I do, but You've got to do that at a relative scale to how much money is going from one side of this equation to the other. You ask anybody that knows me, they knows the majority of my money is going towards this area. Sparingly will my money go towards this area, okay? Most people, most of their money will go towards this side and sparingly will money go towards that side. And that's how things begin to play itself out, okay? So more videos on this coming soon. As of right now, I want you to click the link below so that way you can get the Empire Builder, which is gonna show you how to be able to build your empire from scratch, okay? And as you begin to build your empire, always think about this. Rich people invest their money in assets, things that are making them money over time, while poor people always spend their money on liabilities, things that are going to lose them money over time. No matter how much money or how little you have right now in your bank account, all it takes is you making the decision to begin to retrain your mind. Because you could have all the money in the world but if you spend it like a poor person, eventually you're gonna go in a poor house. There's been a lot of people that have made a lot of money over time and it's been all gone. And then there's been stories about people that never made over 50 or $60,000 and they ended up leaving with wealth, okay? So which person do you wanna be? Do you wanna have something to leave back to your family and friends? Do you wanna be able to enjoy your life right now rather than always be struggling? The opportunity is available to you today, but you got to choose which side you want to pattern yourself after, okay? So leave me a comment. Tell me how you're going to get more so on the side of the rich and let go of some of the ways of the poor. Download the Empire Builder. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you share this video with a friend, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.